when I say today, not only at the discussion forum, but generally within the larger um, environment. Chapter 5 is very specific. It looks at transitioning South Africa to a low-carbon economy that responds to climate change. The, it says in the National Development Plan, we have a commitment to reduce emissions below a baseline of 34% by 220 and 42% by 225. South Africa has got to reduce its dependency on carbon, natural resources, and energy. The human beings, well, again, in, in terms of climate change, it recognizes that humans rely on the well-being of the planet. This isn't a negotiation. We have to look after our planet, but at the same time, as I spoke before, it's about a negotiation, it's about a balance, because we still have to look at increasing employment and reducing inequality. There are no absolute straightforward solutions. There's a need for consensus on challenges and trade-offs. And at the time, in 2011, as it is currently, only some consensus was reached. So discussions need to be had, and still need to be had. Have. Had. Have. The government's approach in, ter in terms of policies and where its approach is was we need to adapt to climate change to strengthen the nation's resilience, which is a little bit for me a bit of gobbledygook, because what does that mean? In terms of resilience, they basically say we understand it's, it's a reiteration of where uh, uh, the balance is coming from. We need to focus on climate change. We need to mitigate the risk. But at the same time, we cannot forget our people. Decreasing poverty and inequality, increasing education levels, health care, employment, skills development, high energy, uh, uh, security with regards to water, food and natural resources. Again, there is uh, the NDP sees the carbon emissions peaking around 225 and then stabilizing. Again, I, it's, I just repeated this because it's always about a balance. We need to do all of this through discussion, through engagement, to ensure that, to ensure that uh, uh, we are mitigating against climate change risk, but at the same time without hindering our socioeconomic objectives. So some of the things I spoke about, obviously this is 2011, it's going to be very different, well not very different, but there will be some changes and updates today. Expanded renewable energy program, advanced liquid and biofuel sector, etc., etc. Why are we in this space? We're moving from an historical focus on minerals and energy. It's challenging because people, you know, um, people who are not in the know may be saying, What's happening? Why is this transition as challenging as it is? We are historically a country whose policies have focused on minerals and energy. And beyond this, there's also a shortage of skills and capacity within both minerals and energy as well as in renewable. Beyond this, there's also a shortage of skills and capacity. There needs to be, what's very clear is we have an environment a policy environment that focuses on minerals and energy. So for there to be change, there has to be fundamental structural change, which is never easy. Again, this is a quote from the National Development Plan. It's not, mere, it's not merely some plasters that we're going to stick together. We have to have a structural change that moves towards a lower carbon economy. The main challenge, as noted, this is an exact quote, is delinking economic activity from environmental degradation and carbon intensive energy while remaining competitive and keeping to the socioeconomic objectives. It sounds like, and we need to win the lottery. I mean, there's a lot that needs to happen. I thought that was funny, no one else did. Right? <laughs> Okay, so essentially the NDP leaves us in a little bit of a bind because it does say it needs a more detailed analysis to determine the optimal mix of mitigation. Again, the poor and vulnerable have got to be protected no matter what the transitional costs are. They do propose a carbon tax. This again is not new. In 2011 it's mentioned. A carbon budget that sets the amount of carbon that can be emitted to a given amount, uh, within a given amount of time. This approach 
There are some issues around this approach, but someone else will be speaking about it, around how certain sectors may not be affected by a carbon tax approach. It only has an effect uh, uh, within certain, but we, but we have another speaker speaking on that. I want to talk a little bit about the Sustainable Development Goals, because South Africa is not alone, as you know, anyone who reads the newspaper, and I have been going around asking who reads news. Some people don't read news at all. I'm not looking at anyone in particular now. Okay, <laughs> so the Sustainable Development Goals, if you have a look there, they're all about what needs to happen. There's a lot of alignment and similarity with regards to our National Development Plan, but of importance is number seven, affordable and clean energy. They speak again, this is the Sustainable Development Goals from the United Nations, Energy Central to nearly every major challenge be it for jobs, security, climate change, food production, etc. We have to focus on affordable and clean energy. They even started the Sustainable Energy for All Forum. When we have a look at what that specific forum, which is SE for All, in terms of the URL, the website address, it empowers leaders to broker partnerships. So again, it's all about collaboration. Globally, nationally, across the world, be it a developing or developed country, everything is about co uh, collaboration and working in partnership to achieve your goals. They're looking at benchmarking progress, connecting stakeholders, amplifying voices of their partners. They say they know what actions are needed and that they will be taking stock in these years, 18, 2018, 20 and 24. I then just wanted to have a quick look at where we stand in terms of the uh, energy supply in South Africa. In terms of statistics, it was fairly difficult to get statistics in terms uh, in, with the research. Uh, in the International Energy Agency has 2015 statistics for South Africa. As you can see currently, although it doesn't include electricity, the total primary energy supply for South Africa is around 68% of, uh, it is around 68% from coal, still. There was also information from Statistics South Africa with regards to electricity produced and consumed in South Africa, that was 2014. Oh, just to go back to the 2015 data, there was an uh, update, there was a 2016 which was very similar, but uh, you know, always looking after potential fake news. I wasn't that happy with the site, so I went for the International Energy Agency statistics. I thought a very good way of having a look at what's happening and introducing the Department of Energy is what's actually happening in the last month when it comes to, uh, when it comes to energy and sustainable energy for South Africa. What is actually in the headlines? What is getting our attention? Renewables industry rubbish Nemesis claims, Numsa's claims. Uh, there, that was the claim against uh, putting together uh, uh, the independent, the, I, the IPPP, IPPP. How many P's are there? I just, I never know how many P's. Okay. Engineering use. Uh, Africa struggles to meet energy demand and reduce carbon emissions. So the Africa court dismisses bid to block the renewables deal. South Africa, there was, uh, uh, SA News is a government site which uh, focuses very much on news that comes out of government. Energy mix, key, ooh, okay. energy mix key to combat municipal energy challenge, so we know it's at a municipal level. Salga, the South African Local Government Association calls for financial viable energy solutions. Civil society takes on new coal plants. Nuclear builds contribution to South Africa's GDP will be staggering. A lot of mixed messages happening. Why South Africa's power utility should boost its output of in-house renewables? Energy intensive firms say carbon tax is the wrong tool. Energy researchers applaud carbon tax, but call for a simplified design. EIB, the European Investment Bank, pumps 25 million into an off-grid solar project. Challenges and opportunities abound in Africa's energy sector. That gives you some idea of the landscape. So we obviously are still in negotiation. 
We are still in a space where, I would say in terms of 2011, where we know we need renewables, we know we're looking for sustainable energy, but it is definitely about engagement discussion and certain trade-offs because of our primary goals according to the National Development Plan. Thank you very much.